Hello everyone, it's Brandon from Smart Business Solutions. As of yesterday, Hubdoc and Zero's connection is officially live, um, meaning that if you've got an active Zero subscription, you'll now be getting Hubdoc for free. As a result of that, I thought I would record a quick video just taking you through the basics of Hubdoc, how to use it to get your documents into Zero, and how to reconcile them on both ends. Hubdoc sort of pitches itself as a way to streamline and automate your bookkeeping, um, giving back more time to businesses and business owners to focus on the important things within their business and also outside of that. So hopefully this will give you sort of some insight into how to use it and you can go on to um, open up your own file and begin using it and mastering the, all aspects of Hubdoc. So without further ado, we'll get started. Um, so when you log into your Hubdoc, this is the screen you'll be faced with. Um, you've got, we'll go through these options here first. So first thing we want to look at is adding an account. So if you click into here, one of the sort of selling points of Hubdoc is it's got a, a setting called Fetch. Um, what Fetch will do is you can log in to any of these suppliers, so Telstra, Vodafone, um, energy suppliers, eBay, and when they upload an invoice to your online account, what you can do is log into Telstra once and then it will automatically fetch all those invoices and bring them into Hubdoc. That sort of gives you a one-stop one shop when it comes to reconciling and finding all your invoices. Once you've logged into all these accounts, um, you can just log into Hubdoc and you'll see your invoices there. If we click on Telstra, for example, to log in, what they'll ask you for is your Telstra username and your password. Once you log in, um, it will automatically pull through the invoices, like I said. You only have to log in once, so it's not an every time kind of thing, which is quite good. Next one here is upload a document. We'll come back to that and I'll show you how to go through that. Hubdoc, like a lot of these other um, bookkeeping apps, has a mobile app, which is great. So you can use the mobile app. Um, download the app, take a photo of your receipts when you have them, if you go to Bunnings or something like that, take a photo of the receipt, upload it straight to Hubdoc. When you come back later to do your bookkeeping, it'll automatically be in there. You don't have to worry about data entry or anything like that. Um, as you can see here, you can connect to Zero, one of the major selling points for all our clients. Um, and then there's other accounting softwares that you connect to as well. So let's go over here, this little cog up in the right hand corner, this is where you find all your settings. So as we've just gone through, there is the automated accounts. The next one here is users. So when you open up this, you might want to invite your bookkeeper or people within your organization. So you can just come to your settings and manage users, invite a user. You just put in their username there, which is nice and easy. What you can do is then give them certain access levels. So they can be upload only, um, view the documents, publish it, you can tick in, they can publish documents. Standard automatically can do some things. They can manage users and connections. You can tick in and out. Um, and if you're adding your bookkeeper, you can jump over here and that will just give them access across the two. Um, it's important to note that you can alter all access levels for any users you add unless you give them the account, account and bookkeeper setting then you can't access those um, settings. If we jump across the next tab organization here this is where you'll find the email the client account was set up under. Your company name you can change this at any time anything you want. Um, base currency AUD but obviously if you're operating um, different entities in different countries, you can change the settings there. Your date format, again, if you're in another country and they use a different date setting, you might want to change that one there. Next important thing is uploading files via email. Um, this email here is fully customizable. It'll come up once you first have an account, it'll be quite a long, quite a long email, but you can adjust it and then save. If that email, for example, let's change this just to demo and save it'll tell me the email's already taken, so I just have to change another one. Email's important. Um, what you can do is copy that email, and then if you receive any emails with invoices, you can just forward those emails along to this address, and they'll automatically pull through to your Hubdoc account. This data extraction at the bottom is 
quite useful too. So obviously you automatically want to extract the data from the uploaded document. So you'll tick that. Um, auto extract tax amount for the uploaded documents is another good one to tick in. Um, it just means if there's GST on the invoice, HubDoc will recognize that, pull it out and split that amount. So that's, that's a good one to tick in, make sure those two are ticked in. Um, finally, the in integrations tab, this is where you'll come to connect to your Xero account. Again, you can publish tax data, default tax rates, GST and expenses, GST free expenses. You can change all of that sort of stuff. Um, there's QuickBooks connection there. If we scroll down, if you're using any of these, you can connect them, um, which is good. Again, if you want to store your invoices in a separate email, every time a HubDoc document is uploaded, you can put in an email there and and what it will do is automatically forward that document to your email, meaning that you'll sort of have HubDoc to keep all your files in, but then that email they all go to as well. So it's sort of a brief run through of the settings. Um, what we might do now is jump into how we upload a document. So obviously we can click this link here and upload a document, just a drag and drop. As I said earlier, we could email them in um, or we could use the mobile app. What I'll do is I'll just drag and drop a document here and we'll go through the process. So this comes up now, which is fine. Tick that off. As you can see there, this little clock means it's processing. Um, so it's currently in that tab, tipping. If we go to that tab, there it is there. Now, they don't tend to take too long. There we go. That's what we want to see, this exclamation mark. Um, although sometimes it might mean there's a warning or something like that in this instance, when we're referring to HubDoc, it is a, um, a good sign. It means the document's been pushed into review. So as you can see here, this pulls up the sample invoice. What HubDoc has done now is extracted all that information out. Um, where you can find that is just on this right hand side here if we click this out. So this top line here, the document type, um, HubDoc have said they're looking to get rid of this. Um, it was sort of a an early phase setting they put in, but they don't don't use it anymore. So you can ignore that one. Um, next one, supplier, Foxglove Studios, that's automatically been pulled out of the invoice. That's fine. Invoice number. This invoice doesn't look like it has an invoice number as a sample, so we'll just call it sample. Normally, if there's an invoice number in there, it will be pulled out. Date. Wonderful. There's no due date. We can put one in for one month, for example. Again, though, if the due date is in there, HubDoc will extract that. Currency, AUD, which is what we want. I'll just get this due date to stay. There we go. Currency, AUD, total amount $1,500. That matches there. GST on expenses, because that was the default setting we'd set up in the zero file, in the HubDoc file, sorry, just earlier. Um, and so that extracts the GST at 10%, which it automatically calculates there. Now, if we come down here, this is the connection to zero. So what we want to do here is click configure. Now, instantly we can see this auto sync box. If we tick that box, any further invoices for Foxglove Studios will automatically skip HubDoc completely and go straight into your zero file. The next step here is the status. So where we want to publish it in zero. So you can go into your draft awaiting approval or awaiting payment. We sort of recommend when you're starting out with HubDoc, you just have them published to draft um, and potentially not tick that auto sync to start with. What that'll do is allow you to come into HubDoc, look at what's been extracted, get some confidence that they're extracting the correct information. Once you're confident they're extracting the correct information, you can change it to auto sync. Um, and if you're really confident, you can just change it, change it straight to a waiting payment. And that means when you go into your bank feed, you'll just be able to tick yes to each each item that pops up with those green boxes, which is which is ideally what we like to see. Um, for now, we'll leave it as draft and take auto sync off. Contact. This is where you can choose the contact. Again, you'll only have to choose the contact once. 
In this case, Foxglove Studios is in a contact, so we will add it. Um, there we go there. So what I mean, you only have to choose the contact once. By clicking the save configuration, anytime the supply of Foxglove Studios comes up, it will automatically sync it to this information we've put in here. So it's automatically going to auto sync. It's automatically going to publish it as a purchase, into draft, contact Foxglove Studios. Next step is to select the account. Um, so it looks like this invoice is for rent. So we'll put it to the rent account. Region, this is a good one. If you've got tracking categories set up in zero, you can select in here which tracking category you want it to go to. So for invoices that are going to a tracking category, um, if that invoice is going to relate to, let's say, it's always going to be an east side tracking category, we can select that and then have auto sync on and then be confident that every time an invoice comes through from Foxglove Studios, it's going to go to that tracking category. If you've got multiple rental spaces across multiple tracking categories, all the invoices come from Foxglove, then we might leave that region as blank and once we get into zero, we can choose which one that it applies to. Again, you can choose your customer, Foxglove Studios. So once we're happy with that, we're going to click publish. And you can see the little publishing here, um, the green wheel spinning over there. So that said, it's published fine. Let's jump over to our demo company and have a look if we can find that invoice. Bills to pay, we publish it to draft. Look at that, straight in there, Foxglove Studios. Again, we can come in here. Um, you'll see that the invoice has been attached, which is wonderful. It gives us that two storage. It'll both remain in HubDoc and it will both, and then remain in zero as well, attached to this invoice. Description, we might wanna just change this to rental space and then everything else flows through and you can approve that. And then once we go to our bank feed, that will just match off against the correct payment once it's been paid. We jump back to HubDoc. If you click archived over here, you will see that invoice has been moved. So it went from processing to review and then to archived, which is where it'll now stay. Once we get a number of invoices in, it can be difficult to track where they are. So what HubDuck automatically does is it puts your uploads into a folder for each supplier. So once we get multiple Foxglove Studios invoices, you can just come here and find them. Alternatively, if you go all documents, you can just search Foxglove, Foxglove, and it will come up with the Foxglove invoice there. Just finally, what I'd like to show you is if you put in incorrect settings in that prior step, if you go to the cog up here again, um, and then you come to manage accounts, you can select suppliers, and then from there you can select Foxglove Studios. Um, what that'll do is open up all the settings we have for Foxglove Studios. So you can set up email alerts to automatically email you when a new document's retrieved or when the document is due within five days. You can select your auto sync to zero. You can then configure your rules for auto sync. So here and then in that description we might put rental space so next time we have a foxglove invoice studios we won't have to go into zero and edit that description to say rental space that's just a quick overview on how to use hubdoc hopefully it's been helpful to you if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to reach out go to our website smartbusinesssolutions.com.au or give us a call on 03 5911 7000 thank you